Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you how to check your universal joints, also known as U joints, to see. So people always tell me why they could never live in a van themselves, and I find this really fascinating because it shows me that people really don't understand what living in a van is like, and how could they? I mean, us influencers are always only showing the interesting or the best parts of van life, and you never really know what it's going to be like until you get out here. But I can tell you as someone who's had his fair share of breakdowns, the mechanical stuff really isn't that big of a deal. And you're probably thinking, well Max, you're pretty good at this kind of stuff, and Thank you, I'd, I'd like to think I am. But the reality is, it's pretty simple. You either can fix something that breaks, or you can't. You can limp the vehicle to a mechanic, or you get a tow, and then you get a hotel, and then you wait, and it sucks. It's Don't get me wrong, it's terrible, it's expensive, but that's all there is to it. I definitely think there's a lot to be said for taking an interest in your vehicle, particularly common points of failure and preventative maintenance, and just paying attention to what your vehicle sounds and feels like when you start it up. I very often pop the hood when I start my van, I do a walk around, crawl underneath, listen for weird rattles and squeaks, give the drive shafts wiggle, which is how I figured out this was going on. It's really as simple as that, and you don't have to know a whole lot, you just have to be willing to learn, and I think that's kind of the hardest thing for a lot of people. A great place to start is on vehicle-specific forums, so you can talk to people who own your vehicle and learn what they've had issues with, what kind of maintenance they do. YouTube is also another great resource. There's lots of great creators out there that show you how to do a lot of niche things these days. So while it's not fun having a breakdown, it's really not some big, crazy, insurmountable task in my experience. So this universal joint failed because of something that I think I did. When I got off of the Dempster Highway, I was just blindly spraying water underneath my van with the pressure washer, and I realized I was giving this universal joint just a direct shot of water. So I think I blasted a bunch of dirt and water into the bearings and just ruined the spider bearing. So this actually started making noise about a month ago. I noticed it in Canada but I couldn't feel any play in the joint, so I thought I might be able to ignore it for a little bit. I ordered parts from Japan, actually. They're still on their way to Colorado, and I had planned to rebuild this whole drive shaft when I go back to Colorado in December, but it started making a lot more noise, and I could feel play in the joint, so I realized that I probably need to fix this now. I think if I hadn't done something like this before, I probably would have taken it to a mechanic just because I would have been nervous to try this out here and not wanted to get stuck with a without a drive shaft out in the middle of nowhere, but I'm fairly confident that I'm going to be able to fix this today. When in doubt, more penetrating lubricant. What was I saying about this not being a big deal? Ugh. Where the hell are my vice grips? Where the hell are my vice grips? You guys see what the problem is? So this is a needle bearing. You can see there's bunches of them in these caps and then there's nothing in here, just rust. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> it works. Aha! The unfortunate thing is that this end feels kind of notchy. Um, I think it'll be okay, but uh, 
I didn't think I had a problem with this skew joint, but I do. So I have parts on the way to rebuild the entire drive shaft with Toyota parts. This is a this is an aftermarket U joint on this end, so I'm gonna have to do this job all over again, but it'll be at my parents' house, so I'll have a garage to work in. Which I guess is another good point to have. Um, I wouldn't live in a 30-year-old van if I didn't have somewhere to go work on it. If you're really on top of maintenance, you can get by with field repairs, but for bigger jobs, unless you wanna take every big job to a mechanic, you gotta have somewhere to work. I, th I think you just have to have a dedicated workspace or a new van with a warranty. There's really a lot of ways you can approach keeping your vehicle running right on the road. There's one more maintenance item that I've kind of been neglecting on my van. Behind this panel here is the ECU for the engine, and unfortunately in the 90s, Toyota got a bad batch of capacitors. And I've noticed some weird behavior from my glow plug relay, which is controlled by the ECU. So I think I might have some leaky capacitors in there, which are causing the glow plugs to stay lit for less time when it's colder outside. So all I'm going to do today is take this apart, see if I can see any obviously leaking capacitors, and get some parts on order so I can totally recap the board when I go back to Colorado. Oh, I should disconnect the battery. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be fun to get back in. Woo! I should have seen that coming. Never been opened in 28 years. Kind of afraid. Well, this ECU looks absolutely clean. Actually, that capacitor might be leaking. So I think that capacitor is leaking a little bit, but I've seen much worse on the High Ace Owners forums, so I think I'm going to have no problem cleaning that up and recapping the board, which is good news. But anyways, YouTube sent me an email the other day offering to give me $500 to turn on channel memberships. And so I just turned on channel memberships. It took about 10 minutes and it was probably the easiest $500 I've ever made. They also said that if I get 30 members in the first 30 days, they'll send me another $500. So if you have the time, it would mean a lot to me if you signed up just for a month. I set my membership level. There's one level, it's $1 a month. And there's a couple Patreon videos that I uploaded there to make it worth your while. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you to remember to cancel your membership after a month because I think the YouTube memberships program is a scam. YouTube memberships is trying to replace Patreon, but Patreon only takes 8% of membership fees for themselves. So there are admittedly other transaction fees on top of that 8%, but I see about 85 to 90% of my membership fees in my bank account. I of course then have to pay taxes on that, but YouTube on the other hand with their membership program, and this also applies to super chats, the little comments you see that people make with a dollar donation amount, YouTube takes 30% of that, which is insane to me. And although this is kind of an unconfirmed rumor, it appears that if you leave a super chat or sign up for a membership on an iPhone, then Apple also takes 30%. So if you give somebody $10 on YouTube using an iPhone, that creator likely only sees $4, which to me is a scam. When you're trying to give a donation to someone like me, you don't want most of that money. You don't want 60% of that money to go to big tech companies, right? And this could easily turn into a rant about how big tech companies are ruining everything in the world today, but I'm not gonna go down that road. Suffice to say, I'm going to be turning off channel memberships and 
I read the fine print and apparently I only have to keep channel memberships active for 30 days, but I'm going to keep them active until the money is in my pocket, just to be safe, which should take about 90 days. So please remember to cancel your membership. If you want to support me directly, sign up for my Patreon or buy me a coffee on the Buy Me a Coffee page. Buy Me a Coffee takes 5% plus transaction fees and Patreon takes 8% plus transaction fees. So it's a much better deal for you and me. And yeah, sorry to, to bother you with all this stuff. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.